Hello everyone, Craig Deleuze here, Firearms Policy Coalition, on this Giving Tuesday, where Facebook has committed to match donations made via Facebook to nonprofit organizations, even pro-gun nonprofit organizations, like the Firearms Policy Foundation. So I want to talk with you about one of the successes that we recently had, and that is Avitable V Beach. Now, Matthew Avitable lives in the state of New York. The state of New York has a ban on electronic arms or on tasers. He, now, he already owned multiple firearms. He owned handguns. He owned long guns. But he also was of the mind that he wanted to have a non-lethal way in which to defend himself and his, and his home. So he challenged, uh, he challenged their, the, state, the statewide ban. And uh, I, I'd like to say, needless to say, but in this particular case... Uh, Justice Judge David Hurd actually supported his claim. And what was really kind of interesting about it was that it was probably the same thing you and I would think. You would think a state like New York, which is not as necessarily known for being pro-Second Amendment, you would think they would have said, oh, great, here's a non-lethal option. Uh, we should actually be encouraging this. Instead, you know, the judge basically noted that it sounded kind of odd that the state's remedy for Mr. For, for Mr. Evitable was simply, well, you should just go out and buy more guns. Go out and buy more handguns. Go out and buy more long guns. Now, you and I may agree with that, but the point is this, is that it violates uh, his fundamental right to self-defense, to be able to choose an item that is safe and in common use, right? Safe and in common use. Now, there have been other rulings where people actually tried to say, well, you know, the that... Uh, Tasers, because they weren't around when the Second Amendment was written, well, they're unusual, meaning they're not in com they're not considered in common use, or uh, that they're well, they're they're not covered by the Second Amendment because they're not the the military uh, doesn't use them, or that well, you know, they weren't around then, so there's no way that they could possibly be anyway. Courts have come up with all sorts of reasons why these things should not be covered, but this one it seemed really quite clear. It is a non-lethal way in which to defend oneself, to exercise the fundamental right to self-defense. And that's the first thing that this case uh, brought up. But the other thing that this case really helped to codify is that modern weapons, modern tools for self-defense are covered by the Second Amendment. So in the end, this turned out to be a very, very big case. Uh, and it's the sort of victory that we need your help to support. So here's what we need you to do. If you're watching this on Facebook, it's real simple. You just click the donate button. It's that simple. If you're watching this on YouTube, you got to do a little bit more. You have to follow the link in the description of the video, and then you have to click on the donate button in order to donate. And by the way, encourage your friends to do the same. Folks, we are fighting from sea to shining sea in order to help protect your fundamental right to self-defense. Whether you choose to use a firearm or whether you choose to use uh, electro electronic arms, whatever it is, we want you to have the choice because guess what? It's your fundamental right. Help us help you protect that fundamental right. All right, folks, that's going to be it for right now. We'll be back with more stories on the work that's being done by the Firearms Policy Foundation and the California Gun Rights Foundation. You guys, take care. We'll talk to you again real soon. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.